Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's movie vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we're going to be covering this story from Bounding into Comics because dear lord, um, let me just preface this by saying everyone knows I have been very critical of Zack Snyder. I'm very happy that fans are excited for the Snyder Cut being confirmed and getting an actual release date for 2021 on HBO Max, but I also still have my reservations about really being fully supportive of the project because I don't think it's going to fix the myriad of issues that have been not only in the first Justice League cut, which obviously I know and recognize as being a lot of Joss Whedon's influence, but it doesn't fix the issues that were in the completely controlled by Zack Snyder BVS, Man of Steel, and I just don't really think that he is the director that's going to be able to fix all of those problems. That all being said, I am still very happy that the fans were able to show their voices and also show that they can indeed influence studios to make decisions when they realize, wait a minute, we can actually make money off of this. We can actually, uh, you know, if we, wait a minute, it's like this weird concept that they for some reason forgot. Wait, if we listen to fans, we can make money? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. And the sad thing is the worst part about all of this has not been the people like Ryan RK Outpost or Lethal Lighting. It hasn't been their reactions to this. And I think that I'm happy that they're excited. You know, I'm not really that excited. I think that's just going to be another crap movie. However, I am not as bad as these folks right here who are calling out not Zack Snyder, not being critical of the movie, but are being critical of the fans who pushed for this for years and, and, and tirelessly said, release the hash, you know, release the Snyder Cut, release the Snyder Cut, and did everything they could to show that they had interest in it, that they were willing to buy it, that they wanted to have it actually come to fruition. And you have these idiots and assets over at Screen Rant, Collider, and Vulture that have gone on attacks against the fans. So this is covered by John F. Trent of Bounding into Comics. Again, shout out to you good sir always great to see you doing this and it says here that they attacked the fans and actors after Zack Snyder and Henry Cavill announced the Snyder Cut for HBO Max. And so as I said, I am by no means a fan of Zack Snyder. I am by no means a person that was released a Snyder Cut. I was of the mindset of release the damn thing if it exists because I just want people to shut up about it. Like that was my mindset. And and yet in all of that process, I would never say that it's because of toxic fans or that the fans are somehow evil or that they're bigoted or, you know, you know this, that or whatever, which is what Screen Rant and Collider are trying to say. It's this toxic fan base and toxic fandom and it sets a dangerous precedent. The only precedent that I see being established here are the same things that led to other amazing things. Like, for example, I've got this mouse pad of the Serenity of a Firefly class ship because guess what Firefly was an amazing show that got canceled by a stupid network called Fox and it was because of the brown coats it was because of the fan base that we were able to get that show turned into a movie and guess what the fans won on that we got a movie that was fantastic was it the biggest box office success not necessarily however it was made and the fans were happy and guess what the fans went and gave their money to that and even if it wasn't successful in its theatrical release Lord knows that since it was released, you have several DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, eventually 4Ks as well, and all the other merchandising that has been sold since all of that came to fruition. What do you think is going to happen with release of Snyder Cut? You're going to have a huge influx next year of subscribers to HBO Max, probably even this year too, because you're going to have people saying, oh, this makes me happy. I'm willing to give my money now to HBO Max because they actually listen to their fans. They actually listen to the fan base. And yet, this is something that people, you know, the shills over at Screen Rant, Collider, and Vulture will never fully understand. Let's dive into it. Vulture's Abraham Reisman describes fans who campaign for the Snyder Cut as bullies. He makes it clear from the beginning his article has nothing to actually do with fandom, but is purely political. The second sentence refers to references Donald Trump and Brexit, and he deems Snyder Cut supporters as de classe outsiders. He looks down his nose and sneers at people who want to see Zack Snyder's vision for Justice League. And this is the kind of crap that pisses me off when you try and bring in outside politics that has nothing to do with this. Dear Lord, you're an idiot. In retrospect, it was inevitable. It's like Brexit or Donald Trump's clinching of the presidency. First you hear that it happened, then even if you wanted it to happen, you're shocked. These people aren't supposed to be calling the shots. They're de classe outsiders, drunk on atav atavistic rage and viciously abusive towards their foes. Such people are destined to be at the fringe, not the hub of power. So what you just said is that you do not think fans should be in control of their franchises. What you're trying to say are that the customers, the people that actually buy the movies, the people that actually go to see it once, twice, three times, buy it on Blu-ray, buy it on DVD, buy all the merchandise, you're trying to say that they should have no control in this whatsoever, that they should have no influence on the product that is going to be put out? Are you kidding me, dude? Well, no, I, Vulture is a complete rag of an organization here. 
Reisman goes on, it's difficult to prove anything about a decentralized movement in the ephemeral, ephem, ephem, dear lord, dude, like seriously, I bet you had a little, a little thesaurus, a little, uh, a little dictionary next to you the whole time, like, mm, I can put in some big words here that makes me sound smarter than what I actually am. When you actually break your stuff down, you realize, no, you're just a complete idiot who has their heads so, so, so far up their own tush that... The smell of their own thing smells like perfume now to them. It's difficult to prove anything about a decentralized movement in the ephemeral world of digital media, but geek writers can confidently report to you that many of the Snyder Cut advocates are the same sorts of people who call out entertainment firms for forced diversity and capitulating to the social justice warriors. Yeah, because it's true. Because that's exactly what's happening in modern day culture and the media. Yes, guess what? Forced diversity is not a good thing. It's not. If you have to force something, it means that it's not natural, which means you are shoving something down someone's throat that they didn't ask for and that they didn't want, and then you are therefore turning your backs on the fans who all they want is to be entertained and not to have things being overly political. Dear Lord, these people are complete nincompoops and idiots. All right, let me try and get into the Collider stuff. So, Dear Lord, Collider has been bad for a long time. Uh, to those people that eventually recently left Collider, probably looks like you got out of a sinking ship because, Dear Lord, uh, these are the kind of people that are remaining there. It's ridiculous. Taylor also described from Collider, they bullied those who suggested that maybe the Snyder version, which would require tens of million dollars to finish the studio and visual effects, might actually be the worst version. They bullied those who thought that the theatrically released version was good. But most of all, they bullied Warner Brothers, who clearly went in a completely different direction from what Snyder was planning. Yeah, the studio got involved, and just like when the studio gets involved in the vast majority of products when they do, the movie sucks. The movie is a hot mess. The movie does not actually work, and what you got instead was a terrible film that was not made for the fans, was not made for the customers. Guess what? When you make a movie, you want it to make money. You know what Justice League didn't do? Make money. Again, I just want to remind readers that the cast of Justice League was part of the release of Snyder Cut movement. Taylor's describing the actors who work for Warner Media as bullies. They are describing Zack Snyder as a bully. These are great facts being brought up here, and I freaking love it. That's why I love bounding into comics. While Screen Rant goes the misogynist route. Not to be outdone by Collider and Vulture, CBR's sister website Screen Rant would chime in with their own take about how the Snyder Cut sets a bad precedent for Hollywood. Writer Thomas Bacon, ah, oh, Thomas Bacon, declares the Justice League Snyder Cut marks a subtle shift and the balance of power between studios and the fan base, and they may not be a good thing going forward. Yet, dear Lord, God help us if we don't have a voice in the content that's being put out. God forbid that fans actually have input and a say in this matter. Dear Lord, you are freaking ridiculous. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I could go on even more so. I recommend going over to the site, to the site Bounding Into Comics to uh, take care of it for yourselves. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Like, seriously, as I mentioned before, I am by no means someone that's going to defend the actual Snyder Cut when it comes out because I think it's going to be bad. But I could the very least say that these people, these elitist, right, these access media hacks who have no integrity whatsoever, going after the fans for a, I, th I would argue, a very well-earned win is just not only ridiculous, but it's also just freaking sad, dude. Like, seriously, you want to talk about punching down? Get over yourselves. Let me know your thoughts about this and everything we talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. It helps out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always... God bless. And now a huge shout out to my May Patreon and Subscribe Star members. Albertus Magnus, Animation Commentator, Brian P, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Frank the Tank and the Shaw Hand Weeder Dog Clan, Harold Francis, the Hunker, Chunker, Funker Monkey, In Flame Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jeffrey Toon, Kenneth Cameo, Lady T, Laura Story, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, Orange Hat Reviews, Outpost Dyer, Out of Step with Reality, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, The DJD Show, and Tina B. Thank you all for being my Patreon members, and a shout out to my subscribe star peeps, John B, Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, G2 Cool 99, Darkstar 57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US 888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, Harold Francis, J. Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadon G. Adams, and ZK. Hey man. And a special shout out to David Bobrizic and Edgardo Martinez.
I'm going to leave that pause there just in case anyone decides to join for the month of May because you can indeed join on Patreon or Subscribestart anytime this month to be eligible for any of the perks. They include access to an exclusive podcast that I do with John, the flick pick of John Flickinger's fame. So make sure you go ahead and check that out at the $10 and up level. Also, if you uh, subscribe star or Patreon at $5 or up, you have access to exclusive giveaways of 4K movies, digital films, and a bunch of other stuff in between as well. And if anything, you could at least give anything that you really want to help support the channel, and it would really help me out a lot. It keeps the lights on. Makes me able to continue to do this kind of stuff. So anything you possibly give, check out some more information in the description of the Patreon, Subscribe Star, and of course, YouTube membership links as well. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.